All right, so let's review what we know. We have talked about variables. We've got different data types, and we've got matrices. And then we've got operations, right? This is plus, minus, multiply, divide, power. And then we've got dot, multiply, dot, divide and dot power, which are the matrix ones, right? The dots. And then we've used built-in functions. And these are things like sign, size, help, things like that, that uh, give us extra tool sets other than just the basic operations. So these built-in functions, these are what we're going to build on to next. And what we're actually going to be able to do is create our own functions. And there's a couple ways to do that, which we'll get into. Why would we want to create functions, right? We already have functions that do things like sign, size, help. Uh, why would we want to create more? Well, the reason we use these built-in functions and the reason they made them is because people will use these functions repeatedly, right? You don't create a function just so you can use it once. You create a function because that allows you to basically perform an operation that's more complex and it just understands it, interprets the inputs and creates an output. Because what we've got with functions is we have functions are like miniature programs themselves because the program has whatever stuff you code into the program that's performing operations but then you have your inputs that go into the program and your outputs whatever you're generating from that program we have input some calculations and output with a function we've got the same thing input, calcs, and output. So if you're just trying to perform an operation once, you'd really just do it in its own program. But if you're trying to reuse it again and again, like you're trying to create a sinusoidal function that allows you to perform the operation over and over, then you can create a function. So let's look at an example. Let's say you repeatedly had this problem where you're given a set of matrices and they are A is some set of values, B is some other set of values, and you're trying to compute C where C is the hypotenuse, where this is A, this is B, and this is C. So you're given a set of values where each value corresponds with each other, right? And your boss is just relentless with this. Day after day, he sends you a new set of matrices and you have to type in a dot to the power of two plus b dot to the power of two, all dot to the power of one over two. And this is just driving you crazy. Type in this day after day after day. And it's obviously maddening and must be stopped at all costs. Since your boss had said he won't stop sending them to you because it's quote unquote, your job to calculate this. You must find an alternative to just not doing it at all. So now you've heard of these things called functions to simplify repeated operations and you figure anything is worth a shot at this point. So how are you gonna accomplish this in a function? Let's look at MATLAB. So you pull up MATLAB and you look in this new, in the editor. And you, instead of creating a script, a live script, you go and make a function. Now, what you got here is it gives you function, output arguments, equals untitled two input arguments. And you already remember from a MATLAB class you had a while ago that you can replace each of these with the specific things for your function. So in the brackets here, we're going to list all the outputs we want. And with this, we just really want C. And we'll just call it C because that's what's making sense to us. And right here, you want to put your function name. So let's call this compute hypotenuse. And in the 
parentheses, you fit the inputs, which are A and B for your case. And you'll just call them A and B. You could call them anything because in a function, it will replace the value of whatever you put into this function with A. So it's just internally referenced in here. And then whatever you call the output will be overridden with the value of C. So we're just trying to do C, our output is A squared plus B squared and then square root or the one half power. And you got to save this and because it automatically names it this, you remember the reason for this is because the functions in MATLAB, whatever you name it up here, you've got to name it as the file name. So when I call it compute hypotenuse here, I save it as compute hypotenuse.m and that works great. So now when my boss sends me a matrix, 100 A's and 100 B's, you can just very easily say C equals compute hypotenuse and feed in A is A and B is B. So again, these did not have to match. You could call this one bar two. So long as you fed in to the first spot, what you're expecting for A in the function and the second spot, what you're expecting for B in the function and then C, whatever you want to call this output. So what my boss wants is my output. And when I run this, I'll call it whatever I want. Just call it basic run this. And I'll do my clear sales seat, close all. And when I run this, I get out what my boss wants. So thank goodness. Finally, with that, every problem you've got is solved. So all joking aside, when we did this, we just created a new function, right? And as I mentioned slightly, you can create a new function with new function, but as you can see, it creates a dot M. And so really you can just create a new file and just type in what you need, which is function. And then you say outputs here. So by default, it expects maybe a matrix. So you give it function with uh, output one, output two, et cetera. However many outputs you got, let's say we just got one output. Then this you set equal to your function name. We will call this my function, whatever you want to call it. Just, this is what you're going to reference. This is just like sign as the built-in function. It's whatever you're going to call up every time you use the function. So my function is what I'll call this. And I feed in input one and input two. And let's say I just want to make an adder function. So I'll change the name of this. I'll do adder. And I want output to be equal to input one plus input two. Extremely basic function here. And if I look back here, it gives me two more things other than the computation and end. And this is comments. And I can actually use this. And here I can put adder. And summary of this function goes here. So this takes two inputs and outputs the summation of them. And then you can say adder, just give a more in-depth explanation here, adder, adder of input one, input two, outputs the outputs, input one plus input two. Now, when I say this, of course, I got to save it as adder.m, save. And 
Now I can call this up, adder of one and three, and that will produce four. And you can see this is, this is saying output equals four and ants four, but I don't have in my workspace output. That's because right here, when it printed out output, which with functions, you typically want to make sure you suppress all of the calculations here so that when I were to run this, it would only show ants four. But this output is internal to this function. So this workspace is the workspace I'm interfacing right now. But we know there's some hidden stuff, right? There's the function sign that doesn't show in here. There's pi. Even though pi is not defined in the workspace here, pi is right here. So if I say pi is 3, it'll show in the workspace. But if I clear pi, pi is still there because I can use it, but it's not in the workspace. So there's lots of things hidden in the general MATLAB workspace that's not for our session, they call it specifically here. And with functions, they basically have their own internal workspace where they only have this, like if I tried, I have var one defined right here. Uh, if I said output equals var one, you don't click run from the function, you just call up the function. So I do adder of one, two. Now it says undefined function or variable var one, but var one is in my workspace. So why is this? This is because var one is not defined in the function. So the only thing is defined in the function are what it's given as inputs. So input one and input two, you can only call up input one and input two. So if you needed var one to be in here, you would require when they call up the function to give var one right here. So then I could do var one, but I would have to say adder one, two and var one or whatever I wanted var one to be. Let's say I just want it to be 10 then it would return 10 because now my output isn't input one plus input two. It's just my input var one. So that's how that works. You just need to make sure you're getting everything you need in this function as inputs and your output, if you had multiple outputs. So let's say I want to call this multi operation and my multiple operations are, I want to add subtract, multiply, and divide. And what I've got here is add is input one plus input two. And I'm just going to say A and B to make it a lot faster typing here. So add is A plus B, not input one and input two. Sub is A minus B. Molt is A multiply by B and div is a divide by b. And you got to be really careful in functions. Are you expecting a and b to be matrices? If they are matrices, are you prepared? Do you want matrix multiplication? Probably not in something like this. You want element by element. So now we've saved to adder. If I do adder of 1, 2, it'll give me 3. And if I said add sub mult div is multi or uh, adder of one, two, it will print them all out, which is why you should suppress them. So quick aside here, if I want to suppress all of these lines quickly, then one thing I can do is using Notepad++, which is a great program. Really recommend if you do this. And then after the first line, you just press Shift and right, press Control H. Then if you leave the find what and replace with semicolon slash N, this will tell it replace that enter with a semicolon slash N. And if you have extended search on, then it will uh, replace slash n with a enter or a new line. Click replace all. Then it'll have all but the last line suppressed. And then you can just suppress that one. So just a nice little trick. 
Just copy and paste it back into MATLAB. It will print them all out, which is why you should suppress them, unless you're troubleshooting your program. But there it gives me add, one of two is three, sub, one minus two is minus one, molt, one times two is two, and one divided by two is, of course, 0. 0.5. So it will work if you only have one function in the file named adder. It will just take that function and run it, and it will produce the outputs. But you should name this whatever your file name is. And so if I want multi operation, I'd want just save. Oops. I'll do save as. And then this is not adder, it is multi operation dot m. When I say this, now, instead of adder, I'll do multi operation. And now it works. And I've suppressed it so it doesn't have the confusing prints from inside the function. It's just got my outputs that it's printing out because it's defining add, then sub, then molt, then div. So it's just printing those out for me. So that's how you create a function. You just have whatever inputs you want, whatever outputs you want. Like, let's say one more example, I'll just do new function. Let's do the quadratic formula and I'll just shorten that to quad form. And this output val and ABC, which are my coefficients in the quadratic formula, right? So minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC all divided by two A minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC over 2a. So when I actually compute this, I'll probably say v or val is two things. So I could say val of one is minus b plus square root of b squared minus four times a I multiplied by c and all this in parentheses dot divide by two multiplied by a. And then the second value on output is minus. So now when I save this, save it as quad form. And if I do quad form of one, two, three, it will say invalid use of operator and it'll tell me Okay, this file, line five, column four, I can just click it, it'll bring me to it. And that's because I didn't comment out this line, right? So if I go ahead and do that, it'll give me two options here because I gave it two things. So ants, if I look at size of the ants, or if I pull up that column in the workspace, size of ants, it's got two in here, this one and this one and their imaginary numbers or complex numbers. So this is my first answer with plus the square root. And this is my second answer with minus the square root, which would make sense because I'm just getting plus and minus the imaginary numbers. So that's how that would work. Of course, I'd want to express this. And of course, because this is just making a matrix, I could just as easily have this all in one matrix and it would do the exact same thing, right? So I can comment this out. And if I were to run this after I've saved it, it would output the same thing. Okay. Of course, suppress it. So that's basics of how you create a function. And when we created sum, let's go over here to pull it back up. Uh, yes. Or no, I called it adder. So with adder, 
call it add. And this is adder. So when I run this, adder of one, two, of course we've done this, it'll give me three. But if I do adder, in parentheses, it will automatically pop up a comma b. And the reason for this is because I typed a comma b in here. So that's what I typed for my inputs. If I had input one, input two, then when I do this, it'll now say input one, input two. So this pop-up is smart. It's looking in real time at my function and revising it based on what's actually in there. If I click more help, it will pop up adder. This takes two inputs and outputs the summation of them. Adder of input one, input two outputs input one plus input two. And you'll notice this is exactly what we printed out here. So that's the reason uh, you would give that description here is one so that you know, and anyone who pulls up this function knows, but it'll also print it out here. So that's why you want to format it with the two percents right up here. And you can also type help adder, and that'll print out that exact same thing. So that's why you want to show that here is it uh, just gives you all that information. And now if I were to do this in a new file, adder of input one, input two, say in, enter a value for input one, one, enter a value for input two, two, and I could run it and it'll output three. So close this, but uh, yeah, that's the point of commenting up here. So that's the main way you create a function, but there are a couple of other options. So when, when we use fplot before, we said at of t and then did like sign of t, right? And the reason this works is this is actually an anonymous function. So first we did function something followed by end. Now we'll be able to use at to do an anonymous function. And the way this works is whatever I want to call my function, so let's call this summation instead of adder. And summation will be my anonymous function name. And this equals at, and then whatever I put in my parentheses here is what goes here. So the at is telling you what the inputs are. So val1, val2, then I can write whatever I want to output here. And I don't say like output equals. I just compute whatever my output is. So you can only do a single line of computation in an anonymous function. You can't like say a equals val1 plus val2 and then b is a times three. You would have to do this if you wanted to do it. And just as instead of printing this output into ants, it will be the result of summation. So reality, that's all I want. And you wouldn't have to include the parentheses. So now if I do summation of one and two, okay, I run this, it outputs three, of course, because that's val1 plus val2, 1 is val1, 2 is val2. So just like a function file, like here, uh, val1 and val2 are defined only internally to summation. So it wouldn't matter if I tried to say var1. Would this work? It would in this case, because summation is working in this file. So it's able to access my workspace, uh, but that's typically bad practice. If you wanted var1, to be used, you would have var1 there. And then you could have one, two, three, for example. And we've got six. But if I had var1 is three, we could, unlike the function file, compute that just fine. 
six. So that's an anonymous function. An anonymous function is just useful if you only want that function for internally to this file. So let's say I wanted to create a function and just in this file, I wanted it to do uh, clear CLC and close all. What I could do is I could try creating an anonymous function and this is, I'll just call it CL equals at and then empty because it doesn't need any inputs. But it would do clear. So when I do CL, that's going to just pull up the function handle at parentheses clear. And if I do CL and use the parentheses to call it up, it will not clear my workspace like you might expect. And that's because it would only clear the variables defined in this function already. So you can actually not do that. It's not possible in a function to clear your current workspace. And as you saw, it's just the clear. When I pull up the function handle, because an anonymous function creates a function handle like this, uh, it only cares about the clear because it just does one line of operations. It won't do the CLC and close all. So this will do the exact same thing. Let me remove bar one. Now CL is the same thing because it was ignoring the other ones in the line anyway. But once again, it doesn't clear it because it would just clear internally to this function, even though the anonymous function is able to access the variables here. It's not able to overwrite them or anything like that. It's only able to use them and then whatever output it gives is what it will present for whatever equals or ants if it didn't equal anything, right? So that's how that works. And just as you can do that there, you couldn't do it here. You can do the multiple lines. You do clear CLC close all. So the reason this doesn't work, right, is because there's an error in adder, unrecognized function or variable A, and I can click it, go there. The reason for this is because my inputs, I changed the name. So A and B, if I swap that, then now when I run this, when I pull up adder of one, two, it clears the command window. So it can do that, it just can't clear the workspace. And if I pull up a figure, I've got my figure here and I'll leave it open. And if I do adder of one, two, it will close my figure because so now it's closed. So it can do CLC and close all, but it can't do clear because it can't mess with this workspace that I'm working in. But as you might have noticed, it doesn't give an error, but it doesn't actually output three. Because if I clear this, if I do adder of one, two, it didn't put anything in the workspace. And the reason for this is because in adder, I cleared internally to this all the variables. So right here I said add equals a plus b, but then I cleared add a and b. So when I output add, add is nothing. So it uh, doesn't actually output anything. If I said a equals adder of one, two, it will give an error because Output argument add is not assigned. So we're not able to actually do that because we cleared the variable there. So another important thing to note. Now, let's say we wanted to create a function that takes in the degrees instead of radians for a sign. And there's actually this built in, right? It's sign D is sign of argument in degrees, but let's say this did not exist and you are much more used to degrees than radians. So you want to create this function. So I could say equals at 
x and then sine of x times pi over 180. We compute this and I would suppress this because I don't care about seeing the function handle printed out. But now I can do sine b of 90 and I get out 1, just like I'd hope, whereas sine of 90 is uh, 90 radians is 0.894. So you can also, uh, sometimes I find this useful, if you want to temporarily within a file rename a function, what I can do here is I can call up sine d and use that with the function handle at and sine underscore d will do exactly what sine d does. So I did sine underscore d of 90. If I clear this so that you know that it's not from before, if I do sine d of 90, it'll be 1. If I do sine underscore d of 90, that's also 1. So you're able to call up functions. This is really only useful if you are like trying to rename a function effectively. And in this file, you just want to use it as a different name, then you could do that. Typically, you do want to avoid this because it, one, makes it complicated for people trying to use your file. Um, if you use sine D everywhere, then they know what that means. Whereas sine underscore D, that may not be obvious to them what that means. And then they have to look in the code and see exactly what sine D is doing. So you typically want to avoid that, but it is a possibility. So what else here? That's normal function files. You do function and end. You can just create them with new function, right? Then you have anonymous functions. The way it works with anonymous functions is if it's in the workspace, meaning if it ran in the code, up above, or if it's already in the workspace, you can use that function. What MATLAB is actually doing with the function files is when I call adder, it's looking in its internal list of functions. It doesn't see it. And then it's looking in my current workspace, my current folder, and seeing there's a file adder. Does it have a function? And yes, it does. So then it can give me the information A and B, and it can actually run that from here only because it's in my workspace. If I swapped to here, it will give an error because adder is not in the current folder or MATLAB path. So I can it'll give me an option. I can change the MATLAB current folder or add its folder to the MATLAB path. So if I control click, it will change to the current folder. And if I want to add to the path, which is just where all of the functions are, I can click set path over here in environment and add folder and go down to my whatever folder. So this is actually what I want to put it in, but I'll create a new folder and this is my functions folder. And now any functions that I want to create, I've got in here. So if I say this, Close it now, even if I left. So if I put adder into my functions, even though adder is not here, I can do adder in one, two, because now no matter what folder I'm in, it'll look in my functions and see that function is there and automatically pick it. So that's function file versus anonymous functions where you can access it. Now, there are a couple other types of functions. There's local functions. So if I wanted to have other functions in this file, I can only have this one function be called up outside of this. But if I wanted this adder to use other functions here, so function, and let's just say uh, print out input, when I want to call it, so I'll say output equals printout input of input. And I won't give any comments here. I'll just end. 
and I'll do disp to display and give display this input. So now if I wanted to disp, for example, let's say I want a string and I say the summation of the inputs is and then this add, to print out add. So now when I say this and really I would want this to be in this function so that anytime I wanted to have an input it will say disp the summation of this input is and then disp of the input and I'll say val just for simplicity's sake and then disp of add I want to do disp I want to do print out input and this will automatically remove this now because remove the the underline there because now MATLAB can recognize, okay, this is being used elsewhere in the program, whereas the output is not. But so there, I'm gonna disp the summation of this input is, so just print that out and then print out the add. So now if I go back here, I can just press this. And when I run this, it will print out the summation of the input is, and then it prints out the summation, which is three. So that's an example of using one function inside another. But if I tried to use printout input right here, and I gave it one, we'll say unrecognized function or variable printout input, because in here the, the function we can reference is adder, because that's all that there is in the file. So. We don't have access to print out input in other files or in the command window here. So that's how local functions work. The local function is just another function within the main function file and can only be referenced by that main function. On the other hand, a nested function is when you have a function inside a function. So if you add in here function, and let's just call it test equals function name, just whatever we want to call it, and test in, test out. Here, if we said test out equals test in, and I did end, this would be my nested function. And I can create it in this function just like that. And if I were to do add equals function name of add this is an example obviously this is doing nothing because it's just saying the output equals the input and i suppress this i suppress this now the add should remain the same after i've used this function but just to show you how you can use a function inside another now if i do adder of one two ants oops ants is still three so Perfect, that's how you can use local functions down here, and that's how you can use nested functions up here. And an important thing to know with nested functions is if I did up here, add equals function name of add, would it know what it is? Because in a function, typically we go top to bottom, but the local function, it can pull up from here before it's defined. Uh, going top to bottom, so can the nested function. Well, let's see. If I go here, will it give me an error? And no, it will not, because nested functions like local functions can be referenced elsewhere in the program before or after. So, we'll advance, it's of course three. One more function you can make is if I pull up my functions, if I double click to go in here, right click, new folder, and I type private in here, 
any function files inside a private folder will only be accessible in the folder right above it. So if I wanted the functions in here to only be usable by functions up here, then I would make a private folder. And then the functions up here are the only things that can see what's in that private folder for functions. So real quick to summarize, we've been working with functions and the way this works, right? So we can create anonymous. These are only for locally, like within our one file, because they're stored in the workspace. So as soon as you clear the workspace, they're gone. This is locally. And that's with the at symbol. So you type name of the function equals at inputs. So I'll just say we have one input and then the calculation and then whatever's output from this calculation is the result of this function. Then we have just a file and this is .m in your current folder or your path. And this is where you do function output equals function name and then input. And you can separate multiple inputs with comma in here, just like you can with the anonymous. Then we have nested and private that work just like this. So inside a file, we can have nested. And nested is function within a function. So if I have, and right here we end this with end. If I have function, and then I want to use another function inside that function, then I define the function just like I did up here, but inside here, and then I close them both with end. And then there's local, which has function end with everything inside here. And then later has another function end everything inside here. And this just lets you use that function inside here, not outside in the other world. So that's functions. Go ahead and try creating your own functions and uh, hopefully that made sense. Thanks.